our scripture passage today, we are continuing, continuing to look at what are called life verses. And these are those single verses in the Bible that sum up the gospel or sum up the faith or a place that we can return again and again as a fountain and foundation of strength. And today we have another, another really good one. This is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5. Uh, before we read this, let us pause for a moment in prayer. Good and gracious Father, Lord, who has poured your word into our hearts and given us this gospel, Lord, and given us this word of hope, this word of salvation, and the word of wisdom and guidance. Father, we uh, ask that you continue to inspire us today. We ask, Lord, that as we read and as we hear, that we also may understand. Lord, we, we may absorb this gospel, that it becomes a part of who we are, not just words that we hear or rules that we abide by, but it transforms us until it becomes the substance of our character. Father, bless this holy reading of your holy word. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5. Listen now to the word of the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What does it take to trust a person? I mean, what does it take to trust? I mean, really trust a person i don't mean just trust that they're not going to run you over on the road or poison your food i mean give them a trust of something really important like like with a lot of money what would it take to trust a person what does it take for you to give i guess what you could call a whole heart trust in another person when you could hand over to them a sizable chunk of your fortune and have no worry at all that it will be taken care of so I, listen, I want to give you a few scenarios, and I want you to give me by a show of hands whether or not you would trust this person with uh, the money they're asking for. And, and by this, I think we're going to break down what it means to trust a person and the elements that go behind really trusting somebody, okay? So I'm going to give you these scenarios. Scenario one, all right, you get an email from a Nigerian princess, okay? Yes, she has lost her throne. And she is now poor and penniless. And the only thing that keeps her from accessing her family's vast, vast fortune that they've made over many, many years is a $10,000 court filing fee. And if you would give her this $10,000 court filing fee, she will share with you the abundant treasures of the Nigerian throne. All right, show of hands. Who would give their $10,000? No, I won. Okay, good. Phil. We're going to have talk later. <laughs> I'm glad. You're right. Delete that email. Every time. Delete that email. Okay? The, the problem is we don't even know if that's, that's who it is. I mean, it's probably some guy in his basement in Baltimore. You know, don't give him his money. Okay. Scenario two. A person you know comes and asks you for an investment. A $10,000 investment that they say is a sure bet. Right? They promise. And within two years... I'll probably get you 100, 200 grand. That's how good this investment is. Now, you know this person. You know that they've actually had experience investing. But you also know they've just gotten out of jail for embezzlement and fraud. All right, show of hands. $10,000. Who would, who would go for it? Good, good. That's the right answer. That is the right answer. You're not sure you can trust that guy. All right, let me give you another scenario. Okay, this is a friend of yours. A friend that you know well, a friend that you know loves you and would do everything, anything in the world for you. And they come to you, $10,000, this investment opportunity, they want you to give them $10,000, they promise they'll make you a lot of money. And you ask them, well, what makes you think this investment is so great? And they say, I've just got a good feeling. My gut tells me this is a good investment. All right, show of hands. 
Anybody? Anybody invest in it? Maybe, maybe somewhere you want to help. You want to help them out. You probably feel bad. You say no, but you know, you just, I'm sorry. You just I don't know enough about it. Okay, another scenario. Same friend. He loves you. Do anything in the world for you. Ten, ask him for ten thousand dollars. This surefire investment, and he shows you all the research he's done. The company's got a great portfolio. They've got a good business plan, a great model, and they're a new up-and-coming uh, technology company working with uh, renewable energy, and it's been a proven renewable energy source. It could change the whole market. The only thing is your friend's never invested before. But the research looks good. All right? Show of hands. No, seriously, who would, who would think about giving them the 10000 here? Gosh, y'all are a tough sell. Man. All right, one more. One more. Let me see if I can get you now. Okay, a good friend. This is a good, good friend of yours. You love him. You know this friend would do anything. He's asking for $10,000. He's got this sure investment. He knows it's going to work. It's going to make you 100, 200 grand within a year or two. He's got all the, he's got the portfolio. He's got the information. He's got the research. It looks great as far as you can tell. And he's been investing for 10 years. In the last 10 years, he has never made a bad investment. He's always made money every time. All right, show of hands now. Who would give him the $10,000? All right, so yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're finally trusting somebody. And I think that's what it takes to trust. I mean, if you give me this hypothetical person, and they were actually real, never made a bad investment, and promising me this, not only would I give them whatever money I had, I would go find some more money to give them in order to be able to invest. That is a good opportunity, and that is a person that you can trust. See, this, this fifth person, though, they have fulfilled all the requirements that go into trusting somebody with your whole heart. A big capital T trust. See, and, and a big trust is going to be made up of a bunch of smaller trusts. And if you can fulfill these requirements for the smaller trust, that's when we get into a big, whole heart, capital T trust. And if you look at these scenarios, we, we, we touched all of these. The reason why you didn't trust the Nigerian princess, you didn't trust her identity. You didn't know if she was who she said she was. And that's that first element we have to have in trust to trust with our whole heart, you have to trust their identity. Now, the second person, the, the, the criminal, you knew their identity, but that was part of the problem. You actually knew their identity. You knew this person, but what you didn't trust was their intentions because they had a criminal record. You had no idea what they were going to do with your money as soon as you handed it over to them. So you have to trust their identity. You have to trust their intentions. Now, when your friend asked you for money, you trusted his identity, you trusted his intentions, but he didn't know what he was talking about. He had no knowledge. So to trust with your whole heart, you have to trust in their knowledge as well. And finally, the one person we did trust, but might have sold it for us, is that last person could do everything that he promised to do. He had a proven track record of his ability to take a little bit of money and turn it into a lot. We'll call that one power. He had the power or the ability to do what he said he was going to do. And then every time we have a big trust of somebody, a big whole heart trust, we've got to have all four of those criteria. I mean, think about that, whether it's a doctor who's about to do surgery on you or a plumber who's going to come, you know, get in your house and just mess up the pipes or, or build a house or the dentist who's going to work on your teeth. You've got to trust their identity. That this is real doctor, not a fake doctor. You trust their intentions. That when you're asleep on the operating table, they're not going to start removing organs. You trust their knowledge. They've actually been to medical school and they know what they're talking about. And you trust their power. And this doctor is actually able to do what he says he's going to do. This is what trust is made up of. Trust in their identity and their intentions and their knowledge and their power. If we find someone who's got all four of those, that is a person that we can trust. 
Now, I say that today because our passage, our life verse, is a passage about trust. And this is a really good verse. This is, I mean, all of them are good. All of them are really good. But this is one that I find the most important because it's also a practical verse. A lot of the other verses that we've talked about already are very theological verses, and they, they teach us something very important, and we can translate that into a practical living, but this one is just immediately practical. And the book of Proverbs is a good practical book. If you want to know about how to live life well and especially live life faithfully, Proverbs has got some great advice. Let me give you some good advice today. Chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with your whole heart or with all your heart and do not lean upon your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with your whole heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Now, when we say this out loud, I mean, it's a no-brainer, right? I mean, trust in God. Of course, we're going to trust God. Who else could we trust more than God? If you look at those four criteria of trust, he's got them all. He's got the identity. He's God. He's got the intentions. We know he loves us. He's got the knowledge. In fact, he knows everything, everything there is to know. He knows it. And power, who has more power than God? The power to create a universe with a single word. That is somebody we can trust. It's someone we can trust with our whole heart. And we do that all the time, right? All of us completely trust God with absolute and total abandon. Yeah? Not always. Not always. And it doesn't make sense when we, when we think about it because we should trust God. In fact, there's no one we can trust more than God. Then why do we have such a hard time with it? Why do we struggle to trust God when we know we can trust Him more than any other being in the universe? Yeah, I think it's the second part that gets us hung up. I think that trust in the Lord with your whole heart. Okay, I got that. It's the, and do not lean on your own understanding. That's where we get trouble. That's where we get hung up and snagged is not trusting God, but not leaning on our own understanding. And when it says, trust in the Lord with your whole heart and do not lean on your own understanding, it's telling you to trust God more than you trust yourself. That's where we have a problem. That's where we find it difficult. It's it's saying when when your understanding says one thing and God's understanding says another, you're supposed to go with God, not your own. When your own eyes tell you one thing and your trust of God tells you something else, you're supposed to do what trust God says, not what your eyes say. When you want to do something else, when your heart and your desire is pulling you one way and trust in God is pulling you another, you're supposed to go with the trust God path every single time. When your social circle, when your own brain, when your own logic, when your reasoning, when everything tells you in your own understanding this is the way to go, but trust in God and His way tells you to go another way, you're supposed to go with the trust God every single time. And that's where it gets difficult for us. At least that's where it gets difficult for me when my understanding says one thing to go one way and trust God says to go a completely different way. I mean, in my understanding, when I want to sit with, to want to sit with, uh, my understanding says the cool kids, that's the table you want to go to. That's what my understanding says. Trust God says, no, I'll pick this other table for you. But these kids here are sons and daughters of the kingdom. They're the ones that I want you to be around. No, but my understanding says these are the cool kids. I get lots of social cred. And my understanding says those other kids are dorks. But trust God has taken you another way. And my understanding says the first money I get I need to use for me. I need to do something right like invest it well or, or at least save it. Trust God says the first fruits of your labor belong to me. And the first 10% belongs to the Lord your God. My understanding, when I see an injustice happening, my understanding says, keep your head down and just keep walking. This doesn't involve you. It's not your problem. 
Trust God says I need somebody to stand up for the powerless and the weak. My understanding, if out on a business trip, the woman invites you to your hotel room, what does my understanding say? It's just drinks. It's not going to hurt anybody. Trust God says go back to your own room, call your wife, tell you you love her, and go to bed. <laughs> my understanding, when I see the world go one way, our culture going in one direction, it says go with them. Even if they're calling right and wrong and wrong right, you don't want to rock the boat. You don't want to cause trouble for yourself. Trust God says you have to be holy, even as I am holy. Trust God says do not be conformed to the matter and the nature of this world. That's why this verse is so important. Reminds us, trust God in every scenario. Trust God, it says, with your whole heart, not half-heartedly, not reluctantly, not partly, not kind of. Trust God with your whole heart, your complete trust. And trust in God more than you trust yourself. Your own brain, your own eyes, the witness and testimony of your own reason. Let me give you this question here. If, if whole heart trust right, is made up of all those little trusts we've talked about, identity, intention, power, and knowledge, right, and we trust ourselves more than we trust God, which one of those four do we think we're better than God in? Which one of those four little trusts? If we're going to trust ourselves above and beyond how we trust God, in which of those four little trusts do we think we're better than God? I mean, it's not an identity. Right? I mean, I know we question his identity sometimes, but if we're really struggling with a matter of the decision or understanding or sin or not sin, it's not usually because we don't trust his identity. It's not knowledge. I don't, I don't trust my knowledge more than God's. I mean, he knows everything. It's certainly not power. I mean, how can I trust my power over God's? I mean, he made the whole world with a word. I can't even make a grilled cheese sandwich without burning the bread. Only leaves one left. One place where we might not trust God completely. And that's intentions. It's one place where we might believe that we should trust ourselves more than anybody else, even including God. And I think if we fail in our trust anywhere, and I'm talking out of my own experience, where I fail in my trust anywhere is believing in His intentions. If I fail anywhere in not trusting Him completely, it's not trusting those intentions. And don't get me wrong, I know He loves me. I know He loves me. I know He, he gave everything for me. He gave His Son for me. I know He has my best interests at heart. But still, there's a little part that doubts. And it doubts because even though the long term, I know God is doing what's best for me. I mean, He has an eye for eternity. He's laying out a plan that's much bigger and vaster than my plan could ever be. I know he's doing what is best for me in the long term. It's the short term that I have problems. It's the short term that I'm going to question God's intentions towards me. It's in the short term that I can question those intentions any and at all. See, I'm always going to do what's best for me in the short term and the long term. That's human nature, isn't it? In our decisions and what we do, we want to do what's best for us. But in the short term, i got to say, God has caused me quite a bit of pain and discomfort. He's asked me to deny myself, deny many of my needs and some of my perceived wants. He's asked me to take the high road when I want to take the low road. He's asked me to forgive things that I don't want to forgive. He's asked me to pray for people that I don't want to pray for. He's asked me to be kind to people that I really don't want to be kind to. He asked me not to take vengeance when somebody really deserves some revenge. And even worse, he's called me to a very unlucrative profession. To be a pastor of an unpopular and a fading in popularity religion. He's asked me to be an enemy of the world and a friend to the weak. And I've got it relatively pretty good. 
Some people, he's called to uproot their entire families to sell everything to go to a third world to preach the gospel in the middle of some jungle somewhere that's not even on a map. He's called some people to take their families and move into the most dangerous inner city ghetto in America. He allowed some people to die for their faith. God's short term can hurt. It can hurt a lot. He lets me get sick. He's put me through guilt and shame and repentance and heartache. He's allowed tragedies to happen. I mean, 9-11, the Holocaust, mass shootings. He lets kids die sometimes. He's let people I know, people that didn't deserve it, go through some terrible, terrible times and even lose their life. See, that's where my trust issue comes in. It's not the long term. It's the short term. See, my understanding and my choices, I'm always going to do what's best for me. I'm always going to do at least, well, at least what feels best for me. But God's way, God's way can hurt. I, I, I trust God's intentions in the long term, but my own, I trust in the long term and the short term. There's only one problem with my way. There's only one problem I have with trusting my intentions over God's intentions. One major fly in the ointment that ruins the whole idea of me trusting myself over God. And that's that I am terrible at making the right decision. I am. I'm awful. I am awful. I almost cannot make a good decision on my own. Left to my own devices, left to my own understanding, even though my intentions are to do what is best or profitable or what feels best for me in the moment, I continually fail. I continually, over and over again, get it wrong. Sometimes I can even defy statistical odds. And I got a a, a 90% chance of making the right decision, I'll make the wrong one every time. I can't even pick the right line in the grocery store. I can't. I mean, you get three lines, and this, per, this line's got four carts full of groceries. This line's got four carts full of groceries. This one has two people with two items apiece. Right, I'm going to pick that one. It's the wrong one. Because that one, as soon as I pick it, becomes the slow line. Happens every time. Oh, this rang up two ninety nine. dollars It's supposed to be two eighty nine. dollars Are you sure it's supposed to be two ninety nine? I've got the special right here. You want to see the paper? Well, let me see. Oh, you're right. It is two ninety nine. dollars I'm going to have to go get a manager. I can't change this on my own. Well, you're right. Can you get me a pack of cigarettes? Well, let me find the key to the cigarette case. <laughs> Every time. If you're in a line at the grocery store, don't get in my line. Just get another one, and it will be faster than the line I'm in. I promise you that chronically fail at doing what I think is best for me see I think I know what's best for me but if I'm being honest and let's not lie to ourselves I don't know what's best for me I really don't I mean ask yourself this question how many times have you gotten exactly what it is you wanted only to regret it later I know I've done it How many times have you actually worked for something or even prayed to get something, and then when you got it, decided this is not what you wanted after all? And that might have been one of the biggest mistakes of your life. Me. Done it a lot of times. Because the truth is, I don't know what I need. I don't know how the the future is going to unfold. I don't know how this plan of God is going to work, and then what's supposed to happen at the end of it anyway. I mean, maybe that long line of the grocery store, maybe that's where you meet your future wife or your future husband, as the case may be. Maybe you think you picked the wrong road because that route got you in a traffic jam, but the other one would have ended in an awful car accident. You don't know. Maybe you were passed over for a promotion, but what you didn't know is that job would have had you working so many hours, you would have missed out on some critical years spending with your children that you never could have gotten back. Sometimes you just have to trust God. And you have to trust Him more than we trust our own understanding. 
And if we're honest with ourselves, it's not like he's got us going from one misery to the next. Yes, he puts us in some very uncomfortable positions. Yes, we hurt sometimes. Even if we believe in him, we hurt. But overall, overall, I've been very blessed. And if you look back at your life, you will see overall you have been blessed too. And there is a huge blessing waiting for all of us. If we can trust God with our life. You know, this verse here, 3, 5, is followed by a promise. What I read to you today was trust in the Lord with you all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Verse 3, 6 says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. The path of God does have many trials. But what path doesn't? What path doesn't have its share of hardships? But trust in God. Acknowledge Him as God, and He will make straight your paths. You will know the road that you are walking is the path of God. My friends, He's got the identity. He's got the knowledge. He's got the power. Now it's time to trust Him with His intentions. Trust the path that God has given you. He's given it to you. And he's given it to nobody else. The path is going to have its ups and downs. And it's going to have its share of pain and hardship. But this is God's path. And it is the straight one. Trust in him. With your whole heart. And you will find that this is the path. The only path. That will lead you home. God be all the glory forever and ever. Amen.